Joining us to discuss this is Texas Republican Congressman Jody Arrington and also Texas Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne. Welcome to you both. Uh, Congressman Arrington, I'll start with you. You're looking at what happened here in Texas. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure your family is doing all right and your constituents are doing well at this juncture. But what is the prognosis moving forward for the state and for the people that need help the most? Well, Joe, thanks for your, uh, your thoughts and for the prayers of many around the country. Uh, 20,000 homes every hour coming back online. We had good weather, so we're thawing out. Uh, but we've got to figure out how we never let this happen again. Four million, as you said, people who are left without power. People have lost their lives. Uh, carbon monoxide freezing to death. Uh, it has affected the food supply, it's affected the water supply. Uh, we have to have basic safeguards in place. We have an open, free, and competitive power market, and it's the most efficient and cost-effective in the nation. But we have to make the investment in winterization, in having a plan to have rolling blackouts sooner and smarter than we did, and we have to have uh, some reserve power uh, and, and a base load that right. can support uh, a once in a generation storm like this. So lots of lessons to be learned. Uh, and We've got to make these investments so it never happens again. Right. To that point, Congresswoman, I'll come to you because obviously Texas, the ninth largest economy in the world, larger than even Canada, you start talking about the fact that you do have great energy independence. But to the Congressman's point, the investment in that infrastructure to make sure that days like this, weeks like this never happen, uh, don't occur. Uh, the National Review this week saying that we have to make a decision as Republicans if we're going to be penny pinchers or risk averse. You can't always do both. What is your take on this? Well, I think the first thing is we need to make sure that we're investing in reliable baseload power. And what we found is, you know, with solar and wind, you will never have enough baseload power to be able to, you know, keep everybody's home heated or cool, as we saw in California over the summer at mass peaks. We also have one of the fastest growing populations in Texas, and we need to make sure that we're keeping up with that demand and that we're actually knowing about it. I mean, the communication over this last week was horrendous. I was one of those homes. You know, I was out of power for nearly three days. You know, I woke up one morning, it's 42 degrees, so I can definitely sympathize. But the communication with ERCOT was lacking, if, uh, and, and that's being kind. We need to make sure that we are making, uh, uh, contacting our local elected officials. We are contacting people. I mean, ERCOT had sent out some memos earlier to folks saying, we've got this, you're okay, just stay off the roads. And the fact is, is that once we are in the middle of it, is when they let everybody know, hey, your, your electricity is going out. We don't know how long, we don't know when it's gonna happen. There needs to be some accountability. We need to make sure that leadership at ERCOT, what happened, and I'm, I'm very ha happy that uh, Governor Abbott has asked to investigate what's going on at ERCOT, how those issues happen, lack of communication, and what we're going to do to prevent it in the future. But the fact is, is that we need to make sure that we are investing in things like fossil fuels, natural gas, and nuclear. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, next generation nuclear. We had been shutting those things down when they are the most reliable sources of baseload power that we have. Right now, Congressman Arrington, uh, specifically talking about this debate between renewables, base power, it wasn't just also the wind that broke down, it wasn't the turbines that stopped spinning. We had a catastrophic failure of all of these things that we know are the most reliable sources of energy. Nuclear failed. Uh, you had the nat natural gas that also failed. Uh, you have the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, responding to accusations that green energy is to blame, uh, leaving millions without power. I want to take a quick listen to that and then get your feedback. I will say that there has been some uh, inaccurate accusations out there that suggested um, that uh, renewables caused failures um, in Texas's power grid. Have gone so far as to say that failures in wind and solar were the least significant factors in the blackouts. I now, to that point, we're sitting here. We know for a fact that if we'd made investments in nuclear increasingly over the last decade, we probably wouldn't even be having this conversation. But if we're talking statistically, does she have a point when we talk about the energy that was required to keep the lights on in Texas as it relates to this specific storm? Look, we are blessed with an ocean of natural gas, and the shale revolution has been a game changer 
but I'm an all the above guy. I think it's important to make the investment in, in renewable. It's not there yet economically. It will be in the future. And we've got to make sure for the sake of national security and to undergird the greatest economy in the world that we're making investments in all the above. Now, my, my colleague Beth Van Dyne is absolutely right. Wind and solar is intermittent. So you have to make sure that you have a solid base load behind that because the wind doesn't always blow. And certainly in extreme weather situations, you're, you're going to knock out not only wind and solar, but we saw gas lines freezing up, the gas wellheads frozen. We saw water freeze at nuclear plants. So yeah. we had all sources that were under severe stress and that's why you need winterization. But uh, having a portfolio that's diverse is smart and not being hostile to fossil energy like the Biden administration is, they wanna just basically regulate it out of existence is, is a train wreck, not only for situations like this, but even in the best of weather conditions, we rely 80% on fossil fuels. It's cheap, it's reliable, and, uh, and it's keeping consumer costs low and helping our economy to grow and create jobs. So you've got to be balanced, I think, in, the, in your approach to this. Yeah, obviously that's a tremendous importance. Congresswoman, I want to give you the last word. Got about 30 seconds here. You were a former mayor. Want to shift from who is to blame to how do we get help to the people who need it the most. What needs to happen at the local level to make sure cities like the one you were a mayor of in Texas get the help they desperately need? Well, I appreciate you asking that. I mean, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been in close contact with a number of the mayors in this area, asking them what they need. I think that's what, that's number one is communication, finding out where the problems are, what we can do in the future, and and helping them communicate that to their constituents. Right. Who do you call when you need help? Making sure that theme is there, making sure that they have the resources now when they need it. And I know that I'm going to be working with my uh, colleagues in Congress to make sure that we're doing exactly that. We're going to be fighting for Texas, making sure that they have the resources that they need when they need it, and hoping that this never happens again. Yeah, all right. Well, we here at Newsmax are praying for your families and also the families all across Texas. Congressman Jody Arrington and Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening. Thank you, Joe.